What do you think of Spain so far? So far, I'm loving it. Anything strange, weird happen? Everything's so small in our apartment. Yeah, that's the strangest thing. Well, for an American The size of our apartment. <laughs> and all the little stuff. This is my first time to Spain and we arrived to Madrid in the middle of a heat wave. It's like crazy hot every day. We'll be getting around using Cabify. It's similar to Uber or Lyft, but it's founded in Madrid and Cabify is independently owned. All the cars come with Wi-Fi, bottled water, the music and temperature is set to your preference. It's really cool. Throughout the country, we'll alternate between hotels, hostels, and Airbnb. In Madrid, I got my first Airbnb experience, and it was awesome. I was really nervous. I had no idea what to expect, but our studio apartment was so cute. It looks like a model bedroom you'd find in Ikea. And who doesn't want to spend the night in Ikea, right? Right? But enough about the apartment. It's time to explore Madrid. Starting with Retiro Park. Parque del Buen Retiro, literally Park of the Pleasant Retreat, isn't your average park. After all, it was built for royalty. So while here, we're going to play in a few palaces, check out some modern art, and boat around the lake. All for under 6 euro, by the way. Yeah, 6 euro. Intended to be a royal greenhouse, the Crystal Palace now basically exists, uh, well, for Instagram and maybe Snapchat. <laughs> Renting a boat in Retiro Park is a must do for anyone visiting Madrid. And it's only $6. After the park, we make our way to Plaza Mayor and San Miguel Market. Under the impression that Spaniards dine at insanely late hours, we start scouring the streets for food and drink around midnight, starting with Ardosa in the Malasana neighborhood near our apartment. Walking in, we feel we're crashing a private party and after guggling our remove, quickly realize we've missed the tapas window. Oh well, time to rest. Tomorrow's Toledo. Shimmy, shimmy on the left. Only a 30 minute train ride away from Madrid proudly awaits Toledo, a mixed deck of ancient Jewish, Christian, and Muslim cultures. The station itself is a monument to the architecture that's to come. Today, our goal is to get lost completely and miserably. Shimmy, shimmy on the left. Shimmy, 
The only problem, despite its maze-like build, Toledo's a city where it's incredibly difficult to get lost because behind every corner is something you need to see. Up ahead, for example, is the cathedral. Someone got the bright idea to keep the streets cool from the blistering sun by hanging beautiful canopies and chandeliers from the windows. Duh! Just when we think we finally got lost, we run into a beautiful lookout. So, how do you feel about Toledo? Toledo is so far my favorite part of the city. So, we've come to the end of a very taxing day in Toledo. A lot of hiking, a lot of walking. Captivating. Captivating, right. So um, now we are listening to Elephant Man on a clip. When in Toledo. Ole. Reminding ourselves that this is a vacation, we took the third day easy. Left the apartment around 5 p.m. Yes, really and made our way to the Sofia Museum in Picasso's Guernica. Can I get just one picture, please? If you're a fan of Chicago Gourmet, you may be familiar with Sergio Arola. He's a Michelin-starred chef who owns V Cool in Madrid, and his tapas are extraordinary. I just don't think I'm gonna top the tapas from V Cool. Nice. No tapas crawl in Madrid would be complete without El Tigre and their massive, massive amounts of free fried tapas. Nice. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching Travel Goings by Chicago Goings. Let me know what you thought in the uh, comments below. This is my first episode. And I'll see you next in Seville.